we are going to look into entropy and Gibbs free energy. Okay, so what is entropy? Entropy is going to be a measure of dispersal of energy, or you can say that it is also a measure of randomness and disorder. Okay, so uh, this uh, measurement of random, uh, randomness or disorder, dispersal of energy, okay, we actually learn, okay, so that we can actually understand about spontaneous reaction. What is spontaneous reaction? Spontaneous reaction is any natural reaction. Once they start, okay, they continue to happen. But one thing that we need to take note about spontaneous reaction, they can be slow, okay, not all the time will be rapid, or sometimes it can be difficult to start, okay, where they require energy input, okay. So some of the general points that we need to know about entropy, okay, so entropy is a measurement of disorder. So this one, we need to actually know that the entropy will be greater for gas, okay, compared to liquid, compared to solid. Solid generally have the lower entropy. Number two, point number two, Okay, entropy will be higher okay, when we are talking about complex substances compared to simple substances. Example, maybe calcium carbonate is going to be complex substances. Calcium oxide is going to be simple substances. So if you look at <coughs> calcium carbonate, calcium carbonate has more entropy compared to calcium oxide, more ways to rearrange themselves. Okay, and harder substances tend to have, um, harder substances, I think this one I wrote it wrongly, harder substances tend to have lower entropy compared to soft substances, okay? So like for example, diamond, okay? Diamond is hard because they are going to be closely packed. So they have lower entropy compared to uh, soft, uh, for example, graphite, yeah? So another one more thing, general points that we need to remember is when the temperature increases, the entropy will also increase. Okay, so for when temperature increases, like for example, if you are changing solid to become liquid, generally we are looking into increasing the entropy. So since we are uh, we know about a little bit about entropy, let's actually look at standard entropy change. Okay, that's the form, uh, the way we call it. Okay, standard entropy change. So the standard entropy change, which is the entropy total, okay, the entropy total is going to be calculated by looking at the entropy of the system plus with the entropy of the surrounding. So each of them, okay, they have their formula, how to calculate entropy of system. Entropy of the system, you can calculate by looking at the entropy of the products, you minus with entropy of the reactant. But for entropy of surrounding, you look at the enthalpy change divided by the temperature and then the symbol will be negative. Okay, so this is going to be the formula. Okay, this is going to help us okay, to identify whether the reaction is going to be spontaneous or not. So therefore, I put over here, the entropy is going to be when your entropy total is positive, that's going to indicate that this reaction is going to be feasible and spontaneous, okay? It means it can happen. But when you have entropy of total, let's say after you calculate and you found out the entropy total is going to be negative, then we can say that this reaction is going to be non-spontaneous. Now, we can actually further change okay, the formula, okay, because using the uh, this information okay, related to enthalpy change, we can replace okay, uh, the formula over here, whereby we can actually put the delta H divided by T negative over there, and you will get this formula. Okay, as well. And this is also going to actually give you information about whether something is spontaneous and so uh, so not. Okay, but that will be a different part where they are going to use what we call as Gibbs free energy. Okay, so if you are just looking at entropy, then we are looking at feasible reaction is going to be positive. But now if I bring this formula up, okay, when I bring the formula up, I can do something. Okay, what I can do. Okay, this is going to be the formula that I have. I've written over there. Okay, so 
the formula that I have written here, okay, I just wrote it over here, okay. So, okay, it's a bit laggy over there, but anyway, so you can see the formula, okay, that I have written, okay, is going to be written over there, okay. So if you look at the formula, okay, this is the formula, and I am going to try to modify this formula. How I modify this formula, I times with negative t. When I do that, I am going to get this expression, okay? So this expression, I'll just bring it up, okay? Negative t, I'll just bring it up, okay? Where you are going to get something like this, but, okay, Gibbs free energy, okay? There is a formula for Gibbs free energy, okay? What is going to be the formula for Gibbs free energy? Gibbs free energy is going to be negative t times the change in entropy of the system, okay? negative t okay times with multiply with s total okay so when you put this this is the same as this okay i can rewrite this formula as gibbs free energy equals to okay i can bring this delta h in front and then minus with t okay and then change in entropy of the system okay so that is actually uh, some of the Okay, I'm trying to show you okay, how we get this formula. Okay, how we get the formula for Gibbs free energy. Okay, so if we actually put it together, okay, we can determine some things as spontaneous or not. Okay, by looking at two conditions. Okay, that what uh, this is. Uh, this is what I actually started with just now. You can look at the entropy, the change of entropy total. If the change of entropy total is positive, then it's going to tell us that this reaction is spontaneous. <clears throat> On the other hand, if you found out, okay, using the formula, if you can recall the formula, yeah, this is going to be G equals to uh, enthalpy change, okay, minus T S. And this is, do remember, this is not S total. This is going to be system. Okay, system means the entropy of the uh, product minus the reactant. Yeah, you still need to calculate. But anyways, okay, if this value is negative, gives free energy is negative, then we can say that reaction is spontaneous reaction. But I want to actually uh, ask you this question. What makes a system spontaneous? Now, according to the formula that we have derived just now, okay, you can actually identify a system being spontaneous because you want the Gibbs energy to be negative. If you want the Gibbs free energy to be negative, on ideal condition, okay, we want the enthalpy change to be negative, okay, which is less than zero. And on that ideal condition also is going to be minus T, okay, and then this entropy, if we can actually get the entropy to be uh, a positive over here, okay, a positive entropy, what happens is going to be minus with a positive number. So overall, your Gibbs free energy will give you a negative value. Okay, it will give you a negative value. Why? Negative, then negative, positive. So it's going to be uh, negative. So negative minus negative, you will become more negative. Okay, so that's why I put it over here. Okay, ideally it's going to be less enthalpy or, uh, and also the entropy must be greater. So it means that a reaction can be spontaneous in simple term if your H, okay, is going to be less than zero. It's better to just put it. If your H is a negative value, okay, if your enthalpy change is negative and if your as the entropy of the system is going to be positive. That's going to really help us to tell uh, this reaction is spontaneous. Okay, do remember this. So let's actually go for the next part. How about the otherwise? What makes a system non-spontaneous? So let's actually look at the formula again. The non-spontaneous Gibbs free energy must be positive. How do I make ideally something positive? So maybe I can actually make the delta H to become positive, okay? So the delta H should be bigger than zero. And how to make this one positive as well? Because negative is in front. So negative is here. So I need to actually have something negative over here. 
Why negative and negative will become positive, positive plus positive. It's going to give you a positive answer. Okay, so it means that we need this entropy to become uh, less than zero, which is a negative value. Okay, so in simple terms, we can say a system can be non spontaneous if the uh, enthalpy is going to be more than zero. You can just say if the reaction is going to be endothermic and okay, if your entropy is going to be negative uh, these conditions they are going to make the reaction to become non-spontaneous okay so how okay how can we actually represent this using a diagram yeah so this is what we have learned okay so i actually represent this okay in this diagram you can see this diagram i've made uh, i put the hydro uh, enthalpy if your enthalpy is positive if your enthalpy is negative if your entropy is negative if your entropy is going to be positive so previously here if you look at negative and positive okay the, uh, and this is going to be okay if you have okay um h is negative s is positive okay h is negative S is going to be positive. This is going to be quadrant number four. Okay, quadrant number four. And this quadrant number four, okay, is going to be, we can say this reaction is spontaneous. Why spontaneous? Okay, because they are having the H negative and they also have the S to become positive. Okay, that's going to be a spontaneous reaction. So how about okay, uh, the other one that is going to be non-spontaneous? Okay, delta H, okay, the enthalpy is positive, entropy is negative. Okay, this is positive, entropy is going to be negative, quadrant number one. Okay, so this is going to be non-spontaneous quadrant. So non-spontaneous quadrant, you can just say your delta H is positive, and your entropy is going to be negative. So it's a non-spontaneous. So the way, easy way to remember this is whenever you can see a quadrant that has different in positive and negative. There is positive and there is negative. So you determine that first, okay? Non-spontaneous and spontaneous. But okay, how about, okay, we say uh, quadrant number one and four, easy to determine, yeah? So we already done that. Okay, it's quite easy to determine, especially spontaneous. In order to have a spontaneous reaction, you want exothermic reaction, and you want also that reaction to be uh, higher entropy. Okay, the, uh, so you have spontaneous reaction. Quite easy to determine one and four. How about two and three? Okay, the quadrant where you have negative H and negative entropy. The quadrant that has positive entropy and positive H. How do we determine? So in order to do that, okay, we will look at here, which is going to be, uh, when we look at it, it's better if you look at it in terms of solid and liquid. So this is uh, what I've written over here. Solid can be changed into liquid. Liquid can be changed into solid. Okay, And imagine they have reached equilibrium at 25 degrees Celsius, your room temperature. Yeah. So to make it more simple to understand, can we actually change the solid into ice? Okay, this is water. Okay. And then yeah, I rewrite again ice and water. The forward reaction is where ice change into water. Okay. And the backward reaction is going to be water being changed into ice. So let's actually look at the forward reaction. When ice change into water. Okay, solid change into liquid. We know the entropy is increasing. It's positive because they are going to have more order. Okay, solid to become liquid. And at the same time, we know this is going to be melting. Okay, solid to become liquid. It's melting. It requires energy. It's an endothermic reaction. I'll put that first. Okay, the second part over here is, imagine now you have water to become ice. Okay, water is liquid, free to move, more disorder, changing into ice, which is less disorder or more ordered. You are going to have the entropy being negative. And 
when we look at uh, liquid changing into solid, which is freezing, okay, freezing is going to be exothermic. They are going to release energy. So that's going to be negative over there. And you can see both of them are having the same uh, symbols. Okay? So let's actually find out they are going to be spontaneous under what? Very easy. I think when, when it comes to ice to become water, okay? I think when, when ice to become water, I think I put 100. I think shouldn't put 100 because that's going to be gas. So maybe if I'm talking about, let's say, 25 degrees, more than 25 degrees Celsius, maybe, okay, you know that all the ice, okay, can actually change into water, okay? It means that is going to be, if you're comparing, yeah, uh, comparing uh, temperature-wise, you, if you increase the temperature, okay, if you increase the temperature, it means ice can change into water. That is spontaneous reaction. So you just need to join this thing together. Later part, we will just put it together. Yeah. So the reaction will be only spontaneous when temperature is high. So if you look at this example, the second example, Okay, the reaction to change from water to become ice, I think it will be more spontaneous if you do it less than zero degrees Celsius. Okay, so definitely they are going to change into ice. So this is going to be spontaneous when your temperature is low. So what I need to do is I just need to bring this up so that I can put it in the quadrant. So here, if I have positive and positive, okay, this is going to be positive and positive. So this is going to be spontaneous when what? Quadrant number three, yeah? So spontaneous when temperature is high. So I write down spontaneous only when the temperature is high. Quadrant number three. And how about quadrant number two? Okay, spontaneous when what? Okay, exothermic and at the same time, the entropy is negative. So exothermic entropy is negative. It will be only spontaneous when the temperature is low. So I write down, it's only spontaneous when the temperature is low. So this is going to really, really help us to predict whether a reaction is going to be spontaneous or not. And what I want you to look is, okay, basically you need to know how to come, uh, before predicting, how to write it in form of this quadrant so that the, you can use these quadrants to help you to answer questions related to predicting whether the reaction is going to be spontaneous or the reaction is going to be non-spontaneous. So this is the part that I want to teach you today. So this is uh, really, okay, I really want you guys to understand this part, okay? So you need to make sure that you can draw this quadrant and you can apply this quadrant properly, yeah? So um, 